Hey there, champions of milk. Alright, so I've got some tips for how to use that Chaos Blade Pyro build I made aggressively. And I like to treat my spells sort of like attitude adjusters. If I feel like they're opening up really aggressively and I don't like that, I open up with an unlocked fireball. And then when I feel that they're passive, immediately I try and get in there and get aggressive. So, though you're not going to be wanting to like provide consistent, consistent pressure always moving forward, though you wouldn't ever want to do that, uh, you can have a lot of options to surprise your opponent and constantly be switching up your playstyle. There I saw him switch to his shield, and it's kind of like a reactive aggression. I see that he's going for a parry, and then I turn around from unlocked and quickly poke him. And then he comes in aggressively, and I nail him with a fireball. So this build can really just keep surprising people and keep people frustrated, as you see here. And though you're not going to be the best at melee damage, you're not going to be the best at pyro damage, you kind of are the best at mix-up. <laughs> you're definitely superior at, to it at, than a, a pure dex build or a pure pyro build. And I got really bored of that pure pyro build because of that, and I don't play a lot of pure melee builds because of that too. I like these sort of jack-of-all-trades builds where I can balance out several different damage stats and still kind of keep a lot of mobility, keep a lot of... Uh, survivability and still kind of fit on the stamina it's it's kind of like a, a challenge too wow i think i just stood there thinking he was going to roll away got to be careful so you do get your uh, your bad reads punished but there is some good survivability here and here's my favorite way to provide pressure um, when they get low on health and they're afraid to go for parries you can start mixing up your your walk-in fire surge jabs, even going forward, rolling forward on them as they go away, and then mix in those pokes. And since they're going to be so low on health and those fire surges are coming at them constantly, they can't go for a parry, and they really don't have an answer for that sort of pressure a lot of the time. Though you have to be careful depending on the weapon you're facing, if it has a, a really great attack coming out of a roll, uh, like a Goddard's Twin Sword, which I'm going to show a couple cases of uh, towards the end of this video. So my only pressure I really had on my pure pyro was those fire surges, at least safe pressure. So now that I have fire surge and katana running R1s, it's just a lot more fun and I've freed up a ring slot because now I have dex, which does double duty of giving me an awesome weapon as well. So I don't know, I, I really got bored of that pure pyro pretty quick um, and I feel like I really love my dex pyro so now I have two of them. Um, however they play so differently. This build is mainly about surprise attacks as opposed to punishes. And there, since he didn't know I had pyros, and he goes into that walk thinking after all those running R1s I'm in pressure mode. And that's when I do go into pressure mode after he thinks I'm starting to play passive and punishy. And I'm able to land two running R1s after he tries to roll away from my fire surge and roll away from the second R1. And there I don't roll directly away from that uh, that lightning stake. I, you really need to not make mistakes on this build. Even though I fit in a lot of regen, that's basically for kind of mitigating the damage that the Chaos Blade is going to be doing to you. You, you don't want to really be counting on it to make up for mistakes you made in the duel. Um, and there, I love it. God, that running R1 is just so absurdly good on the katanas. And here he's so low health. After I pop that uh, Tears of Denial, I'm making sure to spray that Fire Surge everywhere I can. You know, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but even if he did have regen on, which he should if you're using Tears of Denial, you should have at least one piece of regen to go with it. Um, the Fire Surge is good enough to finish him off. Alright, so here I miss a couple parries and I get punished hard and I start losing this. I land one good uh, roll punish there, but the katana is not fast enough to land the 2R1 combo, which is not just missing out on the second R1 that that Karthus Curve Sword gives you, it's missing out on that lava damage from the, the Chaos Fireball. So it's pretty unfortunate, uh, the, the R1s on the katana standing as opposed to the running R1s, which are superior to the Karthus Curve Sword by a bit. The standing Karthus Curve Sword R1s are superior to the uh, Katanas by a large, large margin. And it's great for roll punishing, which a lot of people are going to be trying to do when you throw those uh, Great Chaos Fireballs at them. 
I missed some good early opportunities for parries on this guy, and then later in the match he starts getting really unpredictable and, and mixing it up. Uh, right there I do a quick swap and he still spots it. So the toughest matchups I'd say for this build are going to be Goddard's, uh, the Astora Greatsword because of that broken two-handed rolling R1 it has, and the Washing Pole, but for a different reason. Uh, so for the first two, it's because you can't really safely go after them when they roll away because they can just come out of that roll with an attack that's so deadly and fast that it's it makes it too dangerous. Goddards are very good weapons for applying pressure because those mix-ups they have. They can do the double roll, they can do a charge R2, or they can go right into that weapon art and just really punish you for going for a parry. So. It's pretty dangerous when you're fighting a, a good player with a weapon that is good with pressuring because you really need to keep the pressure on your side. You need to be the one keeping them guessing, keeping them on their heels. Uh, and you do that by switching up your playstyles. So here I'm going to qu quick switch to the, the running R1, just mixing up so I'm not spamming fireballs. And then he gets really aggressive trying to punish my rollaways and that's when you hit him with the fireball. Uh, so. This build really benefits from constantly switching between all your weapons, which is, you know, two-handing your katana, one-handing it and using some fire surge, or one-handing it and using some chaos fireballs. And you just mix up your weapon, your different spells, and between an aggressive and a passive playstyle. And it's, it's really, really fun. And it's a way to be very successful without having to be super reactive. But like you see there, you really do need to get your rolls right, get your spacing right, get your reads right and then you're able to apply that pressure. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you are looking forward to that Chaos Blade Pyro build showcase. And I hope you stay milky.